All right, now, what I call what I'm presenting this evening, I call it the holy science. I didn't invent that. I, um, I borrowed it. <laughs> now, he's famous, Sri Yukteswar, and I basically follow this format. That's Sri Yukteswar. Sri, uh, S-I, uh, S-R-I, uh, Y-U-K-T, E-S-W-A-R, okay, now I can also, um, Marcus Manilius, the astrologer to, uh, to uh, Caesar Augustus, there was Firmicus Maternus in the second century, Ptolemy, many of these guys who called it the holy science or the divine science. What is it? Well, it's the science of the law of as above, so below. That's basically what it is. When you look up at the stars, um, what you see there is the atoms of the body of the God of the universe, those electric atoms. And that's how Plato described it. By the way, I'm drawing from the Greek philosophers, I'm drawing from Hermes in Egypt, I'm drawing from the East, the Mayan tra tradition, the Buddhist tradition, all of it, because it's all the same story how our souls came down into this physical entity and how it goes back. That's the story of the Bible. It's in the Bible. It's in the Greek scriptures absolutely clearly. And I'm going to show you this. So as we look above, we see these stars and we learn about the zodiac belt and we... Um, let's point over here for east. <laughs> anyway, so if we, if we notice the zodiac belt, it's 17 degrees wide. And the sun is always in that belt, Aphrodite's belt, the zodiac belt. In the Bible, it's called the Maseroth. In the legends, it's called, well, King Arthur and the round table, King Arthur being the sun. Okay? That round table is Aries. I always point to Aries over there, and you'll see why. So just let's have Aries over there. Aries, Taurus, Gemini. They represent the spring months. And then you've got Cancer, Leo and Virgo. They represent the summer months. Let's just concentrate on those because there are six constellations above the horizon now. And those constellations correspond with the Jewish menorah, the seven lampstand, the seven-headed lampstand. Right? Because if you count all those lines, there are seven. Now, what the ancients taught was that the body of the man is in that belt and Aries is the head of the man, and the man is called Adam, Adam Cadmon. And then Taurus happens to be the throat, and Gemini, the twins, these are the twins, Pollux and Castor. Cancer is the chest, Leo is in the heart, of course, the fiery lion, the lion heart. Virgo is the belly, kidneys, Libra, the seat of justice. The equal, the equinox occurs in Libra. Below that, the generative organs is Scorpio, Sagittarius is the upper thighs, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces, the feet. Pisces is mutable water. Water connects with Earth. We are a magnet. Aries is fire. Electric fire connects with the air. And this is what the Plato, the, the Plato and, the, and the Greek philosophers said. Fire is in the head. The air is there. Water is in the feet, therefore we must connect to the earth because the earth is matter just as water is matter. Now, what I'm going to show you is how to understand the holy science. This is the key right there in front of you. That's an old map, as you can see, and you can see the equator running through and you can see this sine wave. And it's 23 and a half degrees north of the equator and 23 and a half degrees here south of the equator. That is the Tropic of Cancer. When the, sun, when the sun hits that tropic, runs straight through Mexico there and all, all, almost through the northern, in the Sahara, all along here through India. That's the Tropic of Cancer. When the sun hits that, it's summer in the northern hemisphere. Okay? When the sun, six months later, that's, that would, the, the longest day of the year there, the solstice, would be June the 21st. 
Here, the shortest day of the year, from the Northern Hemisphere perspective, would be December the 21st. Those two magic days. Remember those? June the 21st and December the 21st when the sun dies. It's considered dead here because it's cold, it's winter. Now you're going to see that that sun that comes up through the equator on March the 21st into the sign of Aries and there you'll see the little symbol of Aries right there. Why did they know that? Well, I'll show you how and why they knew that. There's Aries, there's Taurus, there's Gemini, there's Cancer, there's the sign of Leo, and there's Virgo, the Virgin. And you'll see that as the sun goes through here, in every gospel that you've ever read, in every myth, whether it be the Trojan War, and it's Hercules and his twelve, his twelve labours, or Jesus and his twelve apostles, or Jacob and his twelve sons, the twelve judges of Israel, the twelve voyages of Jason and the Argonauts, the twelve everything. It's obvious we're talking about nature. So our basically all the theologies, misguided though they are, are based on this science. And how they do fear the science. Why do they fear science? Well, let's have a look at this. We have a war. In my language, Italian, scienza means knowledge. Knowledge. That's what it means. They don't like you. These people do not like you to have these people. These people are right brain. This is, comes from the left brain. And there's been this war, this unbalance. This is supposed to be there, by the way. It's not bad. Wouldn't it be over here? Um, yeah, so, 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 Sorry. Uh, hang on. Male is left brain. Yeah. This is male. Right is feminine, isn't it? Uh, yeah. I thought left is, is, is masculine. This is masculine because theology, theos, Greek brothers here know that that's male. Theos is male, the science of, of theos. Philosophy, love of wisdom, feminine. It's feminine. Science, it's, it's our artistic right brain yes this is the artistic side and this is the intuit the one that is connected to the sixth sense this is five sense stuff strictly and people who are locked in this never get it because this is science how do i know because after aristotle all philosophy was categorized under three logic ethics and physics science 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 the counterfeit theology has to counterfeit this in order to succeed and keep people in that low vibration you must believe this otherwise you'll go to hell don't question and what they've done is they've given us Instead of um, logic, you've got dogma, doctrine, dogma, believe this. We're not going to think about it. We're not going to go through the scientific process. In fact, we might kill a few of you, i.e. Uh, <coughs> Boethius, Hypatia, Socrates, Seneca, um, Giordano Bruno, all those wonderful, beautiful men that knew this and were preaching it on the rooftops and they had to die for teaching this. Instead of ethics, they give you morals. You can see it now, can't you? And instead of fig physics, which is pure science, they prefer ignorance, superstition and fear. And these are the tools of theology 
And this is the true love of wisdom. Wisdom comes from understanding. Understanding comes from knowing. And what I'm going to teach you today, I hope, will help you to know the most important science of all because this science underpins everything. This sine wave goes through your body, by the way, every day. It goes from Aries at the top of the head, through the kidneys, through the feet. On an hourly, on a second, every minute, every day, this sine wave goes through everything. Your DNA, everything. I'm going to show you the physics. It's verifiable. There's a modern map of the world. There's the equator. There's the sine wave. Okay? This is an interesting chart. This is the heavens. Now, these guys have sectioned this off in 12 pieces. And there is Pisces, and Aries is second. Well, I wonder why. Well, that's because we have a processional shift. So let's just do a little bit of information, uh, a little bit of... Um, oh, did you write all that down? Did you get that? Oh, well, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yes. Um, This is called precession of the equinoxes. Precession of the equinoxes or Plato, the Platonic year, because Plato virtually was the one that shared the wisdom of the precession of the equinoxes with the rest of civilized mankind because he got it down in Egypt because the Egyptians built all their pyramids based on the procession of the equinoxes. What is the procession of the equinoxes? Well, I just want to introduce you to this book. This is probably the most up-to-date scientific book about our solar system. This guy, Walter Crutenden, suggests that we are in a binary and he's not the first one. This guy says it. And he says that we are in a binary and we take 24,000 years to go around our sister star, which is called Sirius. Sothis. Sothis. Sirius. The brightest star in the sky. You can see it right now in, in uh, Canis Major, right next to Orion. This uh, scientist... You can check out Walter Crutenden's stuff on the internet. Check out some of the interviews where he talks about our sun being in the binary. He gives many proofs in here. And in other DVDs, I spend more time on that and explain, give proofs of the fact that we are living in a binary. I will not do that tonight, but I'm just telling you that because you can perhaps get that book or check him out on, on the internet and learn, please, about this year because... This year is 24,000 years long and it is one, one of the three crucial cycles that you must master before you understand the holy science. This is first, then everything I teach you comes after this. You must learn this, how this works and I'll teach you a little bit about it. The 365 day year and the 24 hour day. Now, these are two pretty simple, these ones, the second and the third motion. These are the three fundamental motions of the solar system. Now, we have months, we have weeks, we have decades, centuries. These are the fundamental mo motions of the solar system, and especially in relation to the holy science. And it's interesting how they gave us 24 hours on the clock because it's the microcosm. Everything mirrors what's going on upstairs. That man Adam, for instance, that I told you before, Aries, Taurus, if you look at the stars in those constellations, for instance, if you notice Aries and Taurus, there's a beautiful cluster of seven or six stars clustered together. 
the most precious stars in the sky called the Pleiades. Right in the middle, right in the middle of Taurus and Aries, right here in the middle of the head of the man. Now what would that correspond to, do you think? The third eye. Exactly. And right next to the Pleiades is the Hyades, and that would correspond to the pituitary gland. And another fact that's interesting is there are two red stars in, in the Taurus section of the sky, the Taurus 30 degrees. There's only four red stars in the sky. Two of them are in Taurus. One is the eye of the bull, which is called Aldebaran, and one is in Orion, which is called Betelgeuse. They're red. Now, Betelgeuse is a massive star. It's much bigger than our star. <laughs> much bigger. It's about to go supernova. There's a scientist in Australia who's saying that when it goes supernova, which it could do any day, we will have a second sun in our sky for two weeks. We will see a second sun and parts of the earth will not have uh, darkness for two weeks. And he said, it's going supernova fast. And they are in this space. Think about it. It appears that they might represent the left and the right brain. And if Orion is killing the bull, which is in the head, well, that would be the left brain killing the right brain. In fact, that's what occult philosophy teaches. That Orion killing the bull, slaying the bull in the sky is... The, the unbalance of the human that we've been in the, in, the, in the left brain for so long in the male polarised and after 2012 that's what procession is all about our galaxy has a plane like an equator just like this and our sun happens to do this every 24,000 years interesting we are right here, guys. We are about to traverse into the northern hemisphere of the Milky Way galaxy. Our sun has been crossing that for the last decade or so. It is now just about there, more over than under. It will happen on the 21st of December 2012. Scientists are watching this right now, the galactic plane. And where it's crossing... Where it's actually crossing is in between Sagittarius's arrow and Scorpio's tail. You can see it. If you go up, look east tonight at about, well, you're probably getting home at midnight. If there's no clouds, look east and you'll see Scorpio. And you'll see it rising up out of the centre of the Milky Way galaxy like the phoenix, which it is. And right there is the middle of the the middle of the Milky Way galaxy. Identify Scorpio, it's the most magnificent constellation in the sky. It beats Orion. It's magnificent. It's the only constellation that actually looks like... It looks like this. It actually looks like a scorpion and the red star Antares is right there. And it hangs on to the two stars of Libra and then you've got Virgo over here and you see it and then you've got Sagittarius down here a whole cluster of stars and right there that's the arrow of Sagittarius right there is the center of the Milky Way galaxy and people say oh astrology that's ridiculous and all of that stuff what are those constellations doing there pointing to the the whole of our universe they're there we're going to see that all of this astrology stuff is not nonsense at all. It is pure science. Yeah. Our binary goes something like this, right? Two thousand years ago, that's our sun, that's Sirius. Two thousand years ago, Sirius turned blue. It's a blue star, it's unmistakable. Look up, it's blue. 2,000 years before that, I've got all the documents here I can show you later. I won't do it now, but I've got all the people who ever said it was red. There's um, the phenomena of Aratus. I'm quoting from the phenomena of Aratus. The mottled hound pursues his fiery track 
So 300 years BC, it was red. It's red. That's one. Aratus is a famous Greek. In fact, the Apostle Paul quotes him when he quotes about the... Uh, uh, in, in the book of Acts, he quotes Aratus. Now, the, and there's others. There's Ptolemy. Uh, I've got Ptolemy's book here. It was red. Red shifted is when stars are moving away from each other. Blue shifted is moving towards. Simple as that. It's turned the corner. We are, we are around here and we're turning the corner. We are about here. And what happens is, as Plato teaches us, we're in the golden age. When our suns come together, that's the golden age, guys. And then what happens is, that would be the Silver Age, the Bronze Age, and then the Dark Ages. We've been in the Dark Ages for 2,000 years, thereabouts. If you follow this book, perfectly on cue. If you follow this book, perfectly on cue. And he gives very many similarities in the Bible. In the Bible, the image of Nebuchadnezzar, the golden head, the silver arms, the bronze, the iron legs, that's what it's talking about. That's the man, the image in the sky. Spring, the golden age. Summer, the silver age. Autumn, bronze. Winter, the iron age. It all comes back to this science. Well, I'd love to spend 20 minutes to give you a lot more proofs, but the thing is, remember, that like the cells in your body, that they've discovered that these cells, most of the stars in the sky, almost 80% now are binaries, whereas 50 years ago there was only 20% of them, and now it's growing every single day. If 80% of the stars up there are binaries, why is ours an exception? Our sun also belongs to a star system, like a molecule. So you've got your cell, your molecule, yeah. uh, your, your, um, well, you know what I'm talking about, um, and the Pleiades are also in that system, and Procyon. Canis Menor. Mm -hmm. So you've got Canis Major up here, yep. you've got the, the dog, got Procyon, and then, then there's Orion stars, and there's a um, Betelgeuse is there, that's the winter triangle. So those two, and the Pleiades over here in Taurus, they are our star system. Right, right you always hear of pe people saying, oh, I'm Pleiadian, oh, I'm, I'm, from, I'm Syrian, I'm from Sirius. That's the star system that we're coming from. Right? Never forget that because the, all the images and all the monuments on the earth, they're all staring for some reason at these stars. They love these stars. In fact, the pyramids, the king's chamber, queen's chamber, and then the, the, the pits down the bottom, there's air shafts going like that, and there's the big, the big uh, sorry, the big galleries in there, right? Goes up to the king's chamber, and then there's a gal there's a there's a um, passageway there. But in the Queen's Chamber, there's, this is south and this is north. These stars are port pointing to Draconis. Draconis. And this star here, this chamber here in the Queen's, pointing south. Guess where that's pointing to? And it's always been pointing there. And you know what? Procession does not remove that star from that chamber. Sirius is always lined up with that chamber because Sirius does not precess. All the other stars go back 72 degrees every year. Uh, sorry, <laughs> every 72 years, one degree. I got that back, back to front. So you live a lifetime, 72 years, and all you witness is those stars moving back one degree in that lifetime. And that's why 72 is a very important number. It's the average human lifespan. It's the average heartbeat. It's the average room temperature. It's the average everything. Check out 72. Go Google and check out 72. I've got a list of the, how many things, 72, because it's all miniatures uh, of the procession. And it's the procession is, is 24. There's other ones. For instance, our galaxy, galaxy takes 220 million years to do a revolution. And then there are other cycles, but these are the fundamental ones to understanding our science because we have to know holy, the holy science, holy is the sun, Helios. Helios, Ine. That's the sun. 
So, holy You've seen this word many times. Olympians. Mount Olympus. This is Mount Olympus. I'm going to show you the real Mount Olympus. Because the ones that they go around, they go around naming in England and Greece and in Italy, the ones that they name, you know, in, in Rome you've got Mars Hill, Saturn Hill. It's all named after the seven, the seven holy ones and I will introduce you to those right now. I have a... Elios? Yes, please. I was going to ask you, um, before you get off the, the actual binary system stuff, do you know how close we get when we're opposite each other? You know Good question. No, I don't. Oh, I don't. Um, I know we're eight light years away, I should say, from each other at this great distance. Yes. But I'm wondering if when we come close enough to be within the distance that would be you know, less than, for example, uh, from here to Alpha Centauri, so we might come down to like maybe two or three light years or something. Yes. This is speeding up. As we get closer, procession, procession is not a constant. No, it's speeding up. And I've got the figures. I can show you the figures. You can see them. And so when we go around here, we just speed up. But it's, we spend a lot more time around here, like about 10,000 years, then six and whatever. It declines. Uh, but we speed up. And because of the light of these two beautiful sexual partners, everything's sex. Everything is sex in the universe. Everything. It's electro magnetic and you remember the religious people I was telling you about before those ones that want you to come into their church and bring your little boys because they love them mostly pe pedophile and they want you to go into their churches because they want to teach you the the opposite of this they don't want you to have uh, you know th this this knowledge about how uh, everything is is sexual they you know it's a dirty word it's not. But by the same token, the people who know the holy science always have a holy respect for sex. It must be practiced in a certain way. It, it can't be... Uh, it's like anything, like wine. If you're a glutton or if you abuse it, it's not good for you. These are the holy ones, guys. The name of the sun, we, we, we seem to um, not have a name for the sun, we seem to have lost it, but I'll tell you what it is. It's basically every name that you see in this room will connect to the sun. I'll show you that later. Elios is the name of the sun. The moon has a name, Luna. Why don't we name the sun? Well, I'll tell you who it is. In the Jewish system, it's Michael, Emmanuel. In the Christian system, it's Jesus, it's Christ, it's Amen, and it's Satan. And his brother, his twin brother, Saturn, is also Satan. I'm going to identify all these guys and then prove it to you that these are the characters. These seven characters turn up in all our stories. Little Red Riding Hood, Wood, <laughs> Little Red Riding Hood going through the woods, <laughs> um, Humpty Dumpty, Jack and the Beanstalk, all our nursery rhymes, they're the characters that always turn up. Elios, Hermes, Aphrodite, Aphrodite, Gaia, the Earth, Aries, Mars, Jupiter, Thor, Zeus, the god of thunder. Why? Well, just Google images of, of Jupiter and you'll see the, the, the thunderstorms. It is constantly... These are all gas giants, by the way. These are the only solid planets in our solar system. Helium, hydrogen, gas giants. This guy sucks up all the comets, protects us, emits a massive amounts of electricity... That's why they knew that Zeus was the god of thunder. And that's Kronos, all man time. Now, when we are captured in, in this atom, this is pretty much the chart of how it works. We come down through Kronos, Thor, Mars, the sun. And you might think, what's the sun doing there? Hang on a minute. That's told me, taught us that the sun was in the middle, but... Isn't the sun in the middle of the solar system? Well, it is. We know that, and they knew that. We come down from Uranus into the rings of Saturn, the Lord of the Rings. That's why we wear rings. We wear earrings because hearing has to do with Saturn, and you've got to listen to the law of Saturn. That's what the earrings are for. 
He's the Lord of the Rings because he has rings and he is the Lord of these rings. One ring to rule them all. And as we descend, the reason why the sun is in the middle is because the sun, we calculate their hierarchy by their orbits. He takes 30 years to go around the sun. He takes 12 years. He takes two, one, two-thirds of a year, Venus, 88 days, Mercury, 28 days, the moon. Therefore, that's their hierarchical order. It's not their physical order in the solar system. So for all those people who poo-pooed Ptolemy for giving us that, um, that order, Ptolemy was no fool. Ptolemy knew the science. Now, <clears throat> so I've discussed this. We can go back to this any time, but I want to get off that now. So the three fundamental motions of the solar system are crucial <coughs> to our further understanding of all things. I hope you can see that. These are the four elements that Plato talked about, fire, air, water and earth. These are the feminine ones, matter, and these are the masculine ones, which come from the fifth element, ether. And these are the five platonic solid, solids that happen to correspond perfectly with each one of these. And what do I mean by correspondence? Plato gave us, and Pythagoras, Pythagoras also gave us the uh, platonic solids, the Pythagorean solids, Pythagorean solids. There they are, <coughs> they, and there they are there. That's the dodecahedron. It's got 12. Dodeca is 2 and 10 in Greek. Therefore, he's the ruler. And all atoms, if you study atomic theory, all atoms, all of them, will be either <coughs> solid, liquid, gas, or light. Okay? They are the four states of matter. And they give us solidity, cohesion, motion, and temperature. As you go along, you see that these all equal. Everywhere you look, there's four. Four cardinal points, four directions, four blood types, four limbs. Uh, every, this, this list here has just begun. I've got it on my computer. It goes on and on. I've just put these in here now so that I can share these with you so that you can understand that when Plato was talking about Earth, he was talking about everything that's solid. Take a look at your body. You've got bones. Take a look at your body, you've got liquid, blood and water. 70% water you are, 70 to 80% water. Gas, yes, there's gas and there's light, there's radiance. That's radiance, energy. That's what atoms will do. Atoms will not do anything other than take these four shapes. Fire. Earth, the cube. Interesting. Think about it. Of course, Earth has to be the cube. When you flat pack a cube, what do you get? When you flat pack a cube, think about it. That's a cube. Every temple is made in that design. Every cathedral. Go down to the city. It's man as above, so below. They're teaching the holy science, but they're hiding it from your view. Carbon. Look at that. We are made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen. Nitrogen corresponds with fire, air, oxygen, water, hydrogen, earth, carbon. Who can tell me what the uh, atomic value of carbon is? That's 12. 666. Yeah, six protons, six neutrons and six electrons. That is the hex that we have, our bodies. Our bodies are our death. It's a baptism in death. We get, Plato said that the body is um, sema, uh, soma, and the tomb is sema. 
So the womb of the woman that we came out of, that's the sema, uh, soma, and we go to a tomb. Do you think maybe womb and tomb have the same meaning? They do. That's why a tombstone looks like a womb, because it's memorial of your ascension back to heaven whence you came. So when we are baptised in carbon, we've been hexed on the cross. That's the man on the cross. He's, he's got a body of fire, earth, air and water because that's what your body's made of. That's the science. That's the philosophy, the physics behind it. We're going to jump from this and I'm going to do my little charts and you'll see how it all fits in. This is the pattern. This is the pattern in which we came to be on the earth. So as Christians, we have a body of carbon and solid body. What we want to do is get baptised with water. Have you been baptised with water? Did, didn't Jesus say we need to have a baptism of spirit? And John the Baptist says, the one coming after me shall baptise in spirit and fire. And Jesus says, no one comes through the Father except through me. I just told you that Jesus is the name, J-E-S, equals the Son in Hebrew. How do I know that? Well, they tell you. Can the Greek people in the audience tell me what these letters stand for? Yota? Ita? Ita? I mean, Jesus Christ is I. Sure, exactly. But you just said Ita. Yeah. So that H is an E. Yeah. Did you say? Yeah. So we've got Ita. Yeah. That says yes in any language. Yes, Krishna. Jesus Christ. They tell you it's there. That's yes. There's the Pope with his yes. They are sun worshippers. There's the yes on the cross. There's the Pope with the yes. just want to throw this in for the Jehovah's Witnesses because I was a Jehovah's Witness for 20 years, so I've come a long way, guys. And when I studied this, well, Jehovah, the one who is vigorous in power, I wonder who that might be. They tell you, and I'm telling you, the governing body of the Jehovah's Witnesses know who they're talking about when they're talking about Jesus. They know that the historical Jesus is the biggest lie that it was ever perpetrated on mankind and there's only been bloodshed since Christianity's taken the throne. I'm going to prove that and show it. Because these sun worshippers, they've gone off balance. We're not supposed to be just <coughs> sun worshippers. What happened to the moon? The moon is min, which was converted to sin. That's who the sinners are, the people who worship. And the people who worship Saturn, because you can, you can respect these gods. When you study astrology, you'll see how you have to respect these gods. You've got to know these seven dudes and where they are in your birth chart. They are so important. And the moon is very important. That's feminine. Venus is feminine. Mercury is feminine because he's hermaphrodite. J-E-S stands for what? It's the name of the sun. It's its name. Yes, means Good question. In Hebrew. That's, that's, I just showed you the origin of it, right? We don't need to argue that. Um, there's Elios, the son. There's the Baptist church. Ooh, the living hope. They're all doing it. You'll see the son in all their images, but they won't tell you. They want you to believe in the, in the historical one. See this? Yes, it does actually, in English, that's the word. Because when we say yes... We are watching the sun setting and rising and the sun is positive, therefore yes is positive. That's why we say yes, it's the name of the sun. The word in our, for affirmative in English is the name of the sun and I'll prove it. Yes becomes yeah becomes the year and who is responsible for the year? Who makes the year happen? Well, the sun, the moon... is the month, 
the hour is, switch those two words around, Horus, and that's the Egyptian name of the sun. What hour is it? What horizon is it in the horoscope? Excuse my writing. <laughs> it's shocking. Sorry, I'll, I'll improve. <laughs> Promise. Um, so you see where hour is, minute is the moon. It's all hiding in there. All our gods, all our timekeepers are hiding in our culture. Now let's take a little journey and see how this works. Would you like to do that? Yep. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? I'll, I'll keep that up because, guys, that information, that information is exquisite. It's just exquisite, that information. I can't tell you how much you can learn by meditating on these fours. Meditate on the fours first and then include the ether and then inclu include the five because everything comes from the source as Plato taught and they all taught. I'm just plucking out Plato because it's easy and I remember what he taught more. <laughs> that that's the cause and that's the effect. This is the world of effects. We have to get out of the world of effects. There's pain and suffering down here and there's good and evil, which is our invention. It does not exist in the mind of God because the God is the universe and as the hermit medicist taught, the universe is mind. All right, so we had the earth before, there like that, and then we had the equator, and then we had the Tropic of Cancer, and then we had the Tropic of Capricorn, right? And then we had the sine wave like that. And we had Mars 21st over here, June 21st over here, September 21st over here, and December 21st over here. Solstices? My birthday. Equinoxes. Which is yours? 21st June. Yes, you're in the middle of Gemini and Cancer. On the cusp. So you're confused. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but it's, that's the 21st, especially the why in astrology is 22 a powerful number? Well, because that's the day that one sign hands over its energy to another sign. The 22nd of November, when JFK was killed. Um, it's a vibration number, isn't it? Yes. Well, because it's, it's changeover. The energy's gone tum, tum, from fire energy uh, 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 of Aries fire energy to earth, solid, fixed earth. It just goes, changes just like that. It goes from electric to magnetic. And this is happening every year and every day, which I'll show you. Every day, every two hours, we go from magnetic to electric, magnetic to electric. Now, <clears throat> so this is obviously summer. Up here in the Northern Hemisphere, this is winter. This is considered to be good because with photosynthesis, starting in spring, Taurus, Gemini, this is spring and summer. These are the good months. These are the bad months. Up here you live. The opposite of live is evil. Evil is down here. This is summer, it's another word for heaven. Winter is another word for hell. How do I know? Because in Italian, inverno is inferno. It's cold, it's not hot. Okay? Good, evil. That's all there is. That's where the evil exists. And as I'll show you later, Saturn, the cold planet way out there, rules Capricorn, Capricorn is here, and Aquarius, winter. Summer rules in Leo, up here rules in the house of Leo in the northern. This is the kingdom of Jesus, the kingdom of the sun, this is the kingdom of Satan in hell, 
Saturn. They are the twin brothers, Mr. Cool and Mr. Hot. Can't doubt that the sun is the hottest. Can't doubt that Saturn is the coldest. Only a fool will. One rules here, one rules there. They are the brothers, Cain and Abel, Jacob and Esau. Every twin that you've ever heard of, there they are. That's the twins. <clears throat> now, when the sun hits the Tropic of Cancer, that's the hottest, well, it's the hottest, it's a hot peak and that's the cold peak, but nonetheless, the, the heat's it, the hottest part of the year is over here. I'll show you that later. Cancer, Leo and Virgo. Let's put those in there. They're the summer months. Three months. One month, two months, three months. 30 degrees, thereabouts. So, <clears throat> then, let's do that, shall we? Um, <clears throat> then we have Aries over here. Taurus and Gemini, they are your summer constellations. When people see that the sun is in those signs, they know exactly what to do. They are instructed, when you see the lamb, you will see the blossoms on the trees. That represents the wool of the lamb, the springtime, the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Why? Because when the sun goes down into Tartarus, down into hell, down into the Red Sea, this is the Red Sea, why is it the Red Sea? Well, because every year, around about September, all that green, lush-looking stuff turns red. And so they look around and they see the red leaves on the trees and they say, oh, the sun is going through the Red Sea, it's September now, October. And it does, it goes through the Red Sea. This is the Red Sea in the Bible that the Israelites go through. The Israelites, these are the 12 tribes of Israel. And as we go down into the Red Sea, down into Egypt, this is Egypt, this is the promised land, the land of milk and honey, the land of, of Egypt, the Garden of Eden, outside of the Garden of Eden. I can go on and on about this, but I have to stop because there's so many... Um, descriptions for this, but you're going to have to use your own mind and just keep uh, to, to meditate on this and, and work out all the others. Um, but just keep in mind the goodness of the photosynthesis lush spring and all that food and the harvest in Virgo. When they see the bull, they are told to get the bulls out and, and plough the ground because it's late April and you have to cultivate the ground and guess what that sign is fixed earth is there a coincidence yes there is we shall see it's, remember astrology is based on this everything is based on this everything electric magnetic positive negative gemini the twins that's reproduction time you see the twin lambs twin goats all around the place frolicking around Cancer, the backward, sideways moving animal. When the sun reaches that point, they put a crab there to indicate that the sun is now, it's reached the holy mountain of Israel. It now has only to have to descend down into it, its hell again. And the hero that conquered now must be vanquished from the kingdom of God, passes through the scales of justice, Libra, and guess who is waiting? Scorpio. No friend of the sun. That's when that sign is in November, from October through November, they know that that is the red dragon that fights this guy, the sun in Leo, who rules there and the moon rules in Cancer. The rulership of the planets is very important. Sagittarius, again, he also inflicts pain on the hero. And that arrow... The last day of Sagittarius is the 21st of December. He, these two inflict pain, the judgment, the pain being betrayed, the son's betrayed here, kicked off his throne as the king Ra, 
he gets enthroned. Over here he's Horus, over here he's Ra, over here he's Set, and down here he is Osiris. Here he is Christ, here he is Amen, here he is Jesus, here he is Satan. Try and remember this because that's why all the names are there. <clears throat> Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces. When the sun hits Leo, that's the roaring lion of, of summer. What a perfect animal to depict mid-summer. The dog days, Sirius, behind the sun here. These are the dog days. The dog days are from here to here. All the summer sun, the lion, the roar. I can read, I can read this out of... I've brought some books along. This story is here. That's the astrologer to uh, Napoleon Bonaparte, Volney. He's the guy who taught Thomas Jefferson. And, um, and all of those guys, uh, George Washington and uh, Madison and all those founding fathers who were not Christian. They were not Christian. They knew this, Thomas Paine. They knew this, Thomas Paine said... The Christian Bible is a parody on the sun. The story of Jesus is a parody on the sun. That's what he said. Thomas Paine said that. He was a smart man. Virgo, the virgins go out and collect the harvest. Libra, the sun is judged on the equinox. Scorpio, the betrayer, that's Judas Iscariot. He betrays the sun. He betrays Jesus with a kiss. The bite of a scorpion resembles a kiss, Mark, two lips. And the, bite, and the scorpion bites with his back sting and not the front, Judas Iscariot. Pontius Pilate, Strong's Concordance says Pontius Pilate is the man with the spear or with the sword. He also is handed from Judas Iscariot to Pontius Pilate to be betrayed and killed in Capricorn, ruled by Saturn. Saturn takes over here. This is Saturn territory, winter. It kills the sun's cycle. He's the killer of the sun. It's winter. And then the sun has to climb up. And as the days lengthen from the 25th of December, the birthday of the sun, coincidence, that's when the sun starts to grow again. We celebrate the 25th, Christmas Day, Christmas being Christ, the sun that makes the crisscross shadows on the earth. As it climbs up, its enemy Satan is there to swallow him up, but he climbs. And the days begin to lengthen here, and that's called Lent. And it passes through, after 30 degrees, the sun gets a baptism in Aquarius, the wet month. Aquarius is January, or Janus, or John Newary the Baptist. The sun at 30 degrees, at 30 years of age, goes unto, into the wilderness. This is the wilderness, ruled by Saturn. Goes into the wilderness to be baptised by John, the water bearer. He's, wa he's watering the earth because it's the wet season. This is the fish season. And we eat only fish, Pisces, after February, don't we? And the days begin to lengthen. Lent, 40 days of Lent. These are the 40 days in the wilderness. February means purify. The sun must grow, get purified and baptised, lengthen and then come up out of the Red Sea into the sign of Aries and they eat the Passover lamb on the first full moon after the crossing of the equator of the sun. The Jews celebrate the Passover lamb. The Passover is the Passover. The sun has finally passed over and Christians celebrate Easter because the sun is in the east and they eat the pot and they respect the marriage of the lamb. It speaks to you. Spiritually it speaks to you. Because remember we discussed that um, as the sun... Let's do a circle now. We'll, we'll get rid of this. We're going over here now. We're going to do a circle because this is our circle. As the sun begins on the 25th of December to climb that mountain, gets baptised at 30 days here in, in John the Baptist, January, and then February comes next, which means purification. Then Pisces means eat the fish, and then 
the Passover happens and they celebrate the Passover lamb. And then guess what month is over here? After March. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking Italian because there's a reason for that. Um, well, that's... that's I, oh, why am I so confused? Exactly. Aprire. This in Latin means to open because here, April, uh, sorry, no, um, here is April, about here, it opens. January down here, here's January the 1st over here, January, Janus implies the God with two heads, one on the back looking at the old year, the old man and the young man looking forward, he's the two-headed God and he has two keys in his hands. He has the keys of the old year and the keys of the old the new year and guess who he is? Saturn, Saturn, old man Kronos. And, and so here is the gateway to the up cycle of the sun and June is the gateway to the down cycle of the sun. Capricorn here and opposite is the unicorn in Cancer, the two corns, the two horns of abundance. Unicorn, Capricorn. There's a reason for this. Look for these things. Always look opposite and you will see clues to everything in this science. It's marvellous. So we saw the goat climbing up the mountain because that's what the goats do. That's why he's there. I can show you all the constellations where they are. And believe you me, it, the, oh, there's nothing greater than knowing the zodiac and the story that's in the zodiac. As I said, agriculturally, you know where you are. Spiritually, you know where you are. It's biologically. No, no, you don't. <clears throat> See the moon cycle? 28 days. The moon, new moon, the moon climbs up the mountain. Quarter moon is the equinox. Full moon is the, is the sun in its glory. Ra. Ra, the radiating one. Radiant. The royal. The name Roy. Raymond. Henry. En roi. Roi is the king in French. Re. Regal. Because the sun is in his kingdom when that photosynthesis, when the glory of the moon, the moon is the copycat of the sun. The moon is the menstruation cycle. Here is the bleeding. The egg takes 14 days to mature inside the womb. If fertilized, a son will be produced or a child. If not, 14 days later, it will be, it would bleed. It won't produce anything. It's exactly what the sun is doing. He's climbing from the 25th, from the evil satanic kingdom. This is the kingdom of Satan. He owns the south. He owns under the equator. All those signs are his. This is the great red dragon, Scorpio, which fights with the Lord, Taurus. Who's the Lord? Orion. Osiris is in there. This is the great red dragon. This is spring. This guy gives you the fall. The fall of the sun. And later, as I show you how our lovely Illuminati families who are running this world, they pay attention to these dates, trust you me. May the 1st, May Day. May the 1st was May Day. And that's when they announced that Hitler is dead. And that's when they announced the phony... Osama bin Laden is dead. And two days prior to that, they had the funeral, the wedding, the royal wedding. Because April the 29th, Aprile, 
is Flora, the festival of Flora. In Japan, they call it Sakura season in March, April. But here, Flora, 29th of April to May, the first, May Day, guess what else they were doing at the Vatican? They were beatifying Pope John Paul II on May the 1st. Everything happened and we didn't notice it, including the birth certificate scandal. These people are scandalous and they, they respect these dates. I'm going to show you later some dates that will scare you. Just go back scare you how much they pay respect to these. Just go back to the sun, though. The, the, the name of the sun in Chinese is virtually the same. It's bird. There you go. Yeah. There you go. And, and why is Horus here? Because um, the horizon, the hour, and then Ra, of course, because of the radiant rays of the sun. And here it's called Set. Why? Because it's a sunset. Oh, Atum. Oh, it's called Atum. Here's a dead giveaway. Autumn. Atum is here. Set and Atum are here. Horus and Set. The war between Cain and Abel. Isaac and es uh, Jacob and Esau. This is the Garden of Eden, the tree of knowledge of... the tree of, the tree of um, life. Because every time the sun passes there and eats from there, it has life in the paradise. But here is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Good and evil. <coughs> On the day you eat from the tree of good and evil, you will positively die. Of course, because you do, you go down to Hades, Tartarus, the Red Sea, the blood. Jesus is crucified four times. Um, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. But the main crucifixion is down here. He is crucified between two thieves. The equinoxes were called two pillars, two trees in the garden, two thieves. Why? Because they're thieves. This thief, remember these are the, these are the days when, when it's 12 hours split down the middle, 12 hours of day, 12 hours of night, only two days. The ancients knew those days. They knew the minute and the second that that split would happen. It's a beautiful, this amazing split because as... Our earth goes around the sun, there's the, that, if that's the equinoxes and these are the solstices, that's, that Aries equinox, as it goes around anti-clockwise around the sun, that Aries equinize, equinox is the start of that sine wave going through the earth once, twice, in, it gets split between electricity and magnetism, win summer and winter. It gets divided into six, gets divided into twelve, and it goes back into itself. But that sine wave goes through your body all the time, all day long. It's that sine wave that does everything. Now, <clears throat> the two thieves... This one steals time from that one, and this one steals time from that one. This is the good thief, because the days grow longer. This is the bad thief, because he steals time from the day, and the nights are longer. The crucifixion of Jesus. And Porphyry, the great scholar who had all his books burned, who wrote after Celsus in the second century, there's Celsus, Porphyry, um, Julian the Emperor, and all these guys who wrote against the historical Christians and the murderous things that they were teaching, destroying this art and killing all the philosophers and shutting down all the schools of philosophy to bring religion to rule us and dominate us with an iron rod, that guy there, Porphyry, said, well, why do you Christians, if Jesus died once, why at, ev at the end of every gospel does he say something different at the end of every gospel? In one he says, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means Father Eli, well, Eli, Eli, who's El? Oh, well, it was Elios. It's Angel, Chap El, Cathedral, um, Elder in the congregation, Elite, um, Michael, Emmanuel, Evangel, all the holy words, Israel, Isis, Ra, and El. El is everywhere. 
the altar. You go to the elder, who is the minister, moon, min, and star. We call our children youngsters. So are they young stars? Yes, they are young stars. They are seeds becoming stars. We will all be stars one day. We will all be stars. Glorious, like Michael. Michael, the archangel, the holy one of God. Because it's through the sun that we get back to the Father. Remember, it's through fire, the baptism of fire. We've had the baptism of water. That's our water bodies. And Christians go and get dipped under water physically, thinking, yeah, that's what it means. No, the science means we've been baptised with a body, then we get baptised with water, and then we get baptised with spirit, and then fire, because water cleans earth, and fire is the great purger of all things. You cannot go back to ether. In the Bible, in Psalm 83, 11, 84, 11, it says, The Lord God Jehovah is a sun and a shield. It says it clearly. There are four scriptures in the Bible that identify God, that describe him. One says, John 4, 8, God is love. Everybody knows that. Love. God is light. God is a blazing sun. Uh, uh, sorry, God is a blazing fire. Hmm, looks like fire. And then Psalm 84, 11. They are the only scriptures that describe God. Only. Could yes? you argue that we get baptised by ether when we die and that are therefore non-corporeal? Good question because spirit actually is in place of ether because they are spirit. So when we get baptised by the spirit and we're saved, well, we become spiritual creatures. What's that blue thing? Ah, good question. I haven't finished that. That's the earth. That is the magnetosphere. That is a shield protecting us from the solar flares. Those solar flares, the very char highly charged particles coming from the sun reach here before eight minutes. The slow ones are nine minutes, ten minutes. But those ones there, if that magneto, if this was not a magnet and that shield were not there, the atmosphere of the earth would be stripped in seconds. So the Bible says the Lord God is a sun and a shield. Do you think that... Uh, no, 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 this is the shield around the earth, just so around the earth. The Van Allen belt's way out there, um, that's past, uh, way past Uranus and Pluto. The asteroid belt is in between Mars and, and Jupiter, that was a planet. And why was it a planet? Well, because our atom, our solar system is an atom, and these bodies, the magnetic bodies are the electrons that go around it. And it's, in, it's not stable. It's relatively stable, but it's not stable. How do we know? Well, seven or 8,000 years ago, a planet just went... And it's the asteroid belt, not the Van Allen, the asteroid belt between Jupiter and Mars. Anyway, I've gone off, but um, let's get back to that. El, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani. <coughs> Lord, why have you... And Porphyry said this 1,700 years ago before the, the, the Christians came onto the throne. Why hast thou forsaken me? Now that's, that's there. God, Lord, Lord, why do you oppose me? Lord, Lord, why hast thou forsaken me? And here it is finished. After he drinks the sop of vinegar, the Lord, the Son, says it is finished. Well, because why? Because this is the finishing line. That's the bread. That's the harvest of the bread. You Greek guys and Italian guys, you'll know when the wine season is. When is the wine? When is the wine pressed in Italy? Autumn. 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 September, October. That's the wine. It is finished. When you drink your, when you squeeze your wine and you get all that beautiful wine and then you squeeze a bit more and a bit more and a bit more and you taste the last part of the wine, what does it taste like? Vinegar. That's why they give the Lord vinegar and he drinks it and he says, it is finished. Because they're just copying what the Egyptians were doing for thousands of years in that, at that season, the high priest of all of Egypt would stand and drink with a glass of vinegar and say, it is finished. Because that's the blood of Jesus, the bread and the wine. 
That's the blood. That's the bread. That's the wine, the blood. Jesus is the son who turns water, who turns water, a beautiful water, into wine every year. Jesus turns <clears throat> in the morning when you see yes come up, where does yes come up out of? From the east. Yes, but out of, if you live on, live on the west, east coast of Australia, Sydney, Bondi, Bondi Beach. It comes up out of the ocean. And what is the ocean called? Maria. Maria. Mary. Jesus is born of Mary. Jesus turns water into wine. Mare. 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 The sea. Marine. Maritime. And, well, I'm at the stage where I'm just going to make this bigger now because we're going to put in all the details. And what I aim to do now is teach you to be a master of astrology in 10 minutes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, you will be. I can promise you that. You'll be a master. And you'll start picking all the people and you pick their star signs. You remember the, remember the, star, the, the sine wave, okay? That's my promise to you. <coughs> and I'll fulfil it. Because it's a simple science. That, you know what that is, don't you? March the 21st, June 21st, September 21st, December 21st. Solstices, equinox. So you imagine the Tropic of Cancer there, Tropic of Cancer below. Now, who knows their astrology well? Can you tell me what is the symbol for the Earth in astrology? What's that? Earth. Do you think they knew something? There's the sun. As I said to you, the sun is the hero of all... No, 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 but we should respect the sun. That's why you, you shut your eyes when you pray to the Lord because they are beings, all those planets. They are living beings. They have souls. And I can read that from all the great philosophers, all of them. They have mind, spirit and body. The sun is three. It has a mind, spirit and a body. That's the sun. When we look up, there's two suns behind it. Porphyry, Plotinus, Plato, all of them said that there are three suns. The mind of the sun, the spirit of the sun, which is invisible, and the mind, and then the body. The sun is the hero of everything. That's the sun. Aries through the sun. There's the sun. See that? The sun. Yes, the sun. These are cars. They're all the sun. Yes, Isis or the sun, it doesn't matter. We call it Jesus. We think it's masculine. It's principle. The Japanese swear it's feminine. It's a feminine goddess. So it's Isis or Jesus, same word. The sun. There's the sun with Leo, Holden. Metro Golden White Mayor. CIA intelligence, Lucent Technologies, The Eye of the Sun, Time Warner, Elvis Presley's label, Sun Records. Look at that. Sun. Well, no, not necessarily. No. There he is. The King? On the Sun. There's the Black Sun Records. That's Saturn, the twin brother of Jesus. Good against evil, cold against hot. Two suns, Vesica Pisces. That's the sun. It has 72 petals. Remember what I said about 72? The sun. The sun. Why would you have some doofus symbol? Of course you're going to have the hero. They're all the hero. Little Red Riding Hood is the sun. Cinderella is the dawn. And Prince Charming is the sun who comes every morning back to the dawn. Every morning back to Cinderella. Everything. Of course. It's, it's Perseus. Perseus slays Medusa. Who's Medusa? When Perseus the sun comes up in the east in the morning, 
We, six o'clock is, we put six o'clock over here in the morning, right? When the sun comes up in the morning, all the stars, Medusa's, the starlit night, Medusa's head gets destroyed. It's all, that's the Trojan War is happening here. The Indians have a better story about the Trojan War than the Greeks ever read. They stole it off the Indians. It happened in the skies. It's all in the sky. Jesus, Hercules, all of them. All the nursery rhymes. And I can read the, from the books. Um, if you really want to see and that every single nursery rhyme and fable, these are old, these books. You've got to dig to find these books. Read these books. See all the notes I've got in these books. Little Red Riding Hood. The sunset is red. The wolf is here. Little Red Riding Hood always comes out again at the other side. It's also the red of the winter. But everything is red here. It's interesting. If you place the chakras from, from the head of the body right down to Scorpio over here, which is the last chakra from the head to the, 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 the bottom chakra in Scorpio, what, what happens to the chakras? They start yellow in the sun, heart chakra, solar plexus, red, 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 red. As above, so below. I'm telling you, that's the, the atom in the sky and it corresponds. The sun. Vodafone. They stole their little 666 from the Ku Klux Klan. I can give you various meanings. All these symbols have seven levels of meaning. The 666 is also the Vatican's... This is what I... What I, what I um, well, I, to I told you that it's carbon. But it is also the triple crown of the Popes. 666. They are the Sestwi KV trust accounts that are attached to your birth certificate. Your birth certificate is connected to those 666. This crown steals your soul. This crown steals your real estate. This crown steals your private property. You own nothing under the Vatican system. They own, they are the landlords of the world. I've done a documentary already on this. <laughs> it's so true. That's the other 666. It's also the carbon. You'll see that there's many higher, the sun, disc over, disc over, the Passover season. The stars, Isuzu, the two S's mean something. I won't go into that now. Seven up. Cancer, six, six, the sun. The unicorn, Cancer and Leo. It's basically talking about the summer, the rulership of the sun and the moon, Jesus and Mary Magdalene. The white moon and the golden sun. Aquarius, the water of Aquarius. Volvo, Mars. And what would that be if you put an A on the end of that? That's what it is. Male and female. It's all six. Mars. This is Toyota. Mars has a very sharp orbit. Venus has a soft orbit. That's the male phallic going through the, the feminine. And that's the sun orbit. The sun. Fiat. Mazda and Nisan mean the same thing. Nisan means the Passover. Nisan 14 is the month of March. Mazda is the month of March. That's the sign of Aries. That's the sign of Aries, the sun going through the equator. Nike, the rings of Saturn. Saturn with a hex on it. Intel, notice what they do with the E. It stands for ether. They always play with the E. E. These are the Illuminati families who love to play with your heads. Trust me. E, 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 Esprit. Why? Because E... E is also the most important letter of the, of the English alphabet. Well, it's, it's, the, it's the fifth letter, and it's the letter for ether. It's ether. If they're not using a symbol of the sun, the fire, they go one up, and they give you ether. No, no, ether. Ether is the ether. Where's my? Uh, 
Ether. Ether. The, the top. Cause. The cause. Where everything comes from. That's God. That's the cause. This is the world of effects. If they haven't got the sun for their symbol, or some star, or Mercury, and I'll show you that all the names in history are connected to those seven, especially male names. See? Five. The sun. Ether. Five. L. Five. You think they know their science? The five points. Five points. Venus. Everybody that sort of produces those knows about the oh, They all know the holy science, but they are using it for their own greed and power and advantage. It's like you will use... Well, they have their astrologers and their oh. black. They, <laughs> they are heavily into satanic occult r yeah, rituals. Yes. Yes. Azura Mazda. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't forget that all these people know stuff because most. That's the sun. Just like the Japanese flag and the Aboriginal, that's the sun. How can, that, how can that be the sun? How can that be the sun? <clears throat> when you go to the Vatican and you see that beautiful... If you've ever been to the Vatican, you see that beautiful colonnade. It's got beautiful big, beautiful big pillars here. You know those big pillars, you know, and then there's that road going to the east and the Pope stays here on his balcony and he's got an obelisk yes. in the middle, right? Well, if you walked around the pavement, you would see there's four statues here. You would see pavement doing this. That is not there. Just disregard that. I've just put that there so you can see that this is nothing other than the sun. It's called the Union Jack because... It's Jewish, Jewish colours. It's the unity of the sun. Jacob is the sun. When the sun, that's the equinox there, when the sun hits the equinox east and they celebrate Easter, the sun casts a shadow on the obelisk, casts its shadow down here. At night, it casts its shadow here. Then it goes down to the winter... So uh, yeah, that's south. South, that's north. When it goes down three months later, it's gone from there, March, it's here now. You've got the winter solstice. Uh, no, sorry. Um, hang on, let's put it, it was there, here, okay, at September. Now it goes down to December the 21st over here. Then it goes back to March, over here, then it goes to the summer solstice, then it goes back. So it's going summer, autumn, winter, spring. Summer, autumn, winter, spring. And as it does that, when the sun rises over here, it casts a shadow over here. And at night, it casts a shadow over here. Over here in summer, it casts its shadow over here. And that's, and it casts, the, the obelisk hits those. And you've got the criss cross of the sun, which is, have you ever seen that cross of Constantine? In this sign you shall conquer. That is the sign of the ki ro. Ki ro is the Christ. Christ, the Christ is the sun, because it makes a criss cross. That's who Christ is. That's the criss crossing of the sun. It's all solar science, all of it. Everything. Yes, it's the sun's path. The four stars. There are four stars in the fixed signs. Aldebaran, Regulus, Antares, and Formalout in Aquarius. They're the four stars. They're the four heroes. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The four gospels. Four everything. Four star. Four star. Four star. Four star. Four star. Four star. Does anyone drive a forester? Eight is this. On my graph, 
Eight is this. The sine wave that I showed you, that sine wave that I showed you, going like that, is the yin and the yang, is the letter S, the serpent on the cross. It's the number eight, the symbol of eternity. It's the dollar sign. It's the swastika. Oh, sorry, I can do better than that. Uh, stylized swastika. It's, it's our religion, science, nature. Our religion, it's not spooky. You don't go to hell. There's no such thing. Okay? There's a, the sine wave, is, it's everywhere. That sine wave that I taught you, that sine wave, is every, it's in your body. I've proven that. Now, this is how you become a master of astrology. Here, <clears throat> and Josephine's going to love this. I'm looking forward to doing this for you because I know you love your astrology. <laughs> Oops. There's your 12 signs. Water, fire, earth, air, water, fire, earth, air, water. Cardinal, fixed, mutable. Cardinal, fixed, mutable. Cardinal, fixed, mutable. And I'm saying it for a reason. It's a mantra and I'm drawing it, writing it for a reason too because once you do this in your mind and remember the solstices and remember the sine wave and remember this circle, Everything connects to this. This is the hidden manner, the hidden knowledge. This is Camelot. This is Shambhala in the skies. Mount Meru, Mount Zion of King David. This is the tabernacle in the wilderness of King Solomon. It's King Solomon's temple. It's in Revelation, Jesus says, I will make you a pillar in the temple of my father. Because we're going back to the stars. Okay? Male, female, male, female, etc. Electric, magnetic, electric, magnetic. Here we put 6 a.m. Here, of course, 12 p.m. Here, 6 p.m. And here, 12. So we've, we've covered the day and the year. The day always begins at sunrise. The ancients said that from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock, Aries rules every day. From 8 to 10, Taurus rules. From 10 to 12, Gemini. 12 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 6, and these are the nighttime signs. So you see how this is black and light, summer and winter, hot and cold, all the good things that we love and need for life and all the things that oppose life and give death. In winter, you can die in these months, especially when the, so the scorpion comes from the scorpion to the, the goat sign, the evil Golgotha where Jesus is, is, is killed, Golgotha, the skull, the place of the skull of death, Capricorn, Saturn rules here and Saturn rules here. These, you can die. You need to have a lot of bread in your pantry in the Northern Hemisphere or you do die. Most people die here. This is where death happens in winter. Winter's a killer. This is life. This is death. Good is nothing but God and evil is nothing but the devil. Okay? And remember I said before, live and the opposite, the mirror image, is evil, lived, and devil. They don't do this in English for nothing. They've done this carefully. Believe me, you're going to see this. 
I'm going to show you later. If you put the letter A there and you wrap all the letters of the round alphabet there, the middle letter will be M, the 13th letter. Matter, A, stands for spirit, air. Here is spirit, here is matter. Here is fire, the kingdom of the sun. Here is matter, the kingdom of water. Matter, mother, marine. And next to M is an N. Nor um, and you get the words um, navel. You get other wor um, water words. And it happens that in the Jewish language, the M and the N that are here, M means water, and which mem, and nun means fish. Swim, in every language almost. You've got air there, and I'll show you that later. We'll put the, but there's better stuff to come. You need to wrap your three wheels around here. Remember, what part of the body is here? Yeah. The head. There's the neck, there's the two arms, the twins, and so on and so forth. And the feet wrap up, the two fish wrap up here and touch the back of the head. There's the man. All you have to do to have the fundamentals of astrology is those three wheels. The body as below and as above the two cycles of the day, 6, 12, 6 and 12, equinox, solstice, equinox, solstice, and you build your knowledge of astrology on that, on those three cycles. Now, when the sun is a little baby here, the sun is a baby here, 25th of December, remember the nativity scene? Because the sun is born and then it grows and has to climb the holy mountain. It's funny, but all of this symbology is Jesus climbing up to, to come in procession on two donkeys. Remember Jesus rides two donkeys into Jerusalem? That's Jerusalem. That's Jerusalem. And right there you have Mary Magdalene. The moon rules here and the sun rules in Leo, right? I'm going to get to the rulers in a minute because that's when you get to put all the pieces together. There are two donkeys here, Asinellus Borealis and Asinellus Australis. When the sun comes through Gemini, it rides those two donkeys to the summer solstice, which is Jerusalem, where he is enthroned, and then he begins to be betrayed. And the story of Samson is similar. He pulls the two posts of Gaza out. He eats honey. There's a beehive in here, a constellation called the beehive, the manger, the beehive. He eats honey out, honey out of the lion that he killed the day before. He gets betrayed by Virgo. Delilah, Delilah, Layla means the darkness, and D in front of it is the door. D is for the door. The door to the darkness. That's why the virgin, the woman, is always betraying the man. <laughs> right? Well, because it's Virgo. Virgo is the door of the darkness. And when the sun is born every morning at 6 a.m., who should be there on the, on, the east, on the western horizon where the sun sets but the virgin? And the same thing happens every year when the sun is born in Aries and they celebrate the, the new year by the, the, the Passover or Easter, there is the virgin. She betrays Samson, cuts all his seven rays of hair. Remember, he had seven rays of hair because, as Plutarch says, the seven-rayed God, that's the sun, beautiful golden rays. But those rays are somewhat diminished when it passes the scales of Libra and the justice and then gets betrayed by the Philistines and then gets blinded. And he says to the Lord, give me one hand to my left and one hand to my right and I'll pull down this whole temple of the Philistines down and I will die with them because that's the sun dying down here when he's betrayed by the Philistines. These are the Philistines. This is the story that's repeated so many times it's not funny. 20 minutes and change tape. Oh, okay. All right. Um, now, the rulers, the rulers of these are <clears throat> Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. They all go down in this order because if you envisage the sun being at the top, remember the, the heraldry, the British heraldry with the, the unicorn and the lion, 
because 2,000 years ago, in fact, that's where they were. They were right there. They've always sort of kind of been there, right? But it doesn't matter. This is the true gospel. It will always, always, always stay here. Even though the equinox is now around about here, going from the Pisces, this equinox here is not happening in Aries anymore. 2,000 years ago it was. 2,000 years ago this was perfectly aligned. Now it's about here, entering the age of Aquarius, going backwards, right? Procession goes backwards. So up until now we'll be at the age of Pisces. Yes. And its opposite is the Virgin. But when we go to Aquarius, the age of Aquarius, its opposite is Leo. So when you see the Sphinx in Egypt with a Virgin face, and the body of a lion, it's telling you that when the lion is lined up with Aquarius, uh, uh, with um, Aquarius, when it, w the equinox will be over here, see? It's, it's here. The age of Aquarius begins here. Its opposite is Leo is going to start on the autumnal equinox. Leo has a star in it. Remember that star? I called it Regulus. It's in the heart. It's the heart chakra. What it means is when Aquarius comes up on that equinox and Leo is on the opposite side, we've just gone from Virgo, the belly, the solar plexus, we've gone to the heart chakra as a race. As individuals, not so. The occultists say that we can ascend in one lifetime. You can do it in one lifetime. You can. When you, re when you reach that ascension period, you, sh you should be able to do all your trans transmuting um, in one lifetime. Now, so the rules go, so in order of Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn, that's how the rulers go. These are the ancient rulers. We now have Pluto over here, we now have Uranus over here, don't we, and Neptune over here, right? They are the next octave. Because those planets could not be seen with the physical eye, they weren't included in, in the seven Elohim in the Bible that says, let us make man in our image. Because it is because of the planets that we have the form that we have. We could never appear like this molecularly if those planets weren't rotating around at super astronomical speeds. And they're all doing different patterns. And when they go around and they do retrograde, they do circles in the sky. And they do all these beautiful patterns. I'll show you some of these patterns. They're just amazing. Come over later and, and um, after, after the, the, the talk and have a look at these. These are all the planets and all the shapes that they, they cause. There's Venus. There's the little petal, the, the five-star petal of Venus. That is Venus and the Earth. They're the patterns that they make every whatever, year or whatever. They, from some nice little occult books. But that, that's, they're the patterns. Those patterns are keeping us in the shape that we have. Oh, that's a long, that's a long one, long one. But I can go into that. If we, if, if we can get past the basic stuff in, and I'm invited back one day, I can go into the deeper stuff. Or we can do, you know, I need a whole Saturday or Sunday to get into all of these intricate things in and out to answer all the questions that people have and everything. I'm really not doing it much. I get irritated actually when I only have two or three hours to do this. It's, it's impossible. But you're, you're getting it, I see. I feel that you guys are keeping up, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. Now, <clears throat> why is it that every time you go through these holy dates in the liturgical Catholic year, you find some unusual stuff? How about this? Uh, <clears throat> on the 15th of August, we have the Ascension of Mary. Ooh. Okay. June 21st, July 21st, August 21st, 15th would be around about here. Why would the, uh, the Virgin ascend? Well, if you know your astronomy, if you know these wheels, you know that on the 15th of August every year, Mary does ascend. Vir Virgo hides behind the sun because the sun has started to go into the sign of Virgo and you can't see it. Well, September the 8th, somewhere around here, is the nativity. So you've got uh, August 15th, the ascension of Mary, and over here you have the, on the 6th of, uh, the 8th of September, about a month later, it actually, that 8th in the, in the uh, Julian calendar, it corresponds to the 21st of September, the nativity of the, vir the Virgin, <coughs> because she's born again. 
The sun has now passed through Virgo and you look in the east in the morning and you'll see Virgo. Ah, finally, it's the 8th of September. And you, and you think, oh, that's a, well, that's just a cope. All right. Jesus, the birthday, <laughs> the birthday of Jesus, the 25th. We know from the Bible that John the Baptist was six years, six months older. Remember Elizabeth went over to, Mary went over to visit Elizabeth and the baby, John the Baptist, because the Messiah was in the womb of Mary. Remember that? Well, so we know for a fact that John the Baptist was six months older, right? Well, when, is John Bap when will John the Baptist's birthday be? Well, it has to be up here. It's the 24th of June. In the Bible, John the Baptist says, the one coming will go on increasing and I shall go on de decreasing because they represent the solstice. Jesus increases. John the Baptist's birthday is one of decrease. San Giovanni Battista. Now, would you like more of these dates? I can give you a hundred. Let's go. Let's do some of these dates and then we can move on. But this is fun, isn't it? Okay, John the Baptist. When does John the Baptist get beheaded? Well, John the Baptist, we already remember that that the, the baptizer. When does he get um, uh, beheaded? He gets beheaded by Leo. He's opposite because this is the house of the sun. This is the detriment of the sun. This is the exaltation of the sun. This is the fall of the sun. Now, how about that? In astrology, every planet has its ruling house, its detriment, its fall, and its exaltation. Let's study the sun. The sun rules here, duh, it has to be because it's midsummer, the dog days, that has to be fixed fire, that's got to be cardinal fire, beginning fire, fixed fire, ending fire, look when the fire ends, these are the three fire signs. Have a look at the cycle with your physics eye. Fire starts here, the sun cycle, that's the fire, fixed fire, there's the sun ruling, opposite is Saturn in his ruling house. His detriment is that house. The sun's detriment is that house. The sun's exaltation is Aries because it exalts. It comes up here and it exalts. It's exalted. This is the fall of the sun. This is the exaltation of Saturn. This is the fall of Saturn. Those two planets, the sun and Saturn, are doing exactly the same thing. The opposite. Because he's the master of hot. He's the master of cool. Saturn's cold. And Saturn kills Jesus. We know that on the 21st of December because he takes over, he's killed. There's no fire here in this quadrant. There's no fire here. There's only fire here, here and here. So he, the son is the hero. Hero is Herod, Herod the Great. Herod kills John the Baptist, has him beheaded. How would he do that? Has anyone got an idea? Well, let's have a look. <clears throat> There's, whenever that goes off, that's fine. <laughs> Don't worry. There's Leo, Herod the Great, and he kills John the Baptist on what is that magnificent day? Let's have a look at that. We've got 29th of August. Because the 29th of August, when Leo comes up, there's John the Baptist, heads down. He goes down below the, the horizon. King Herod kills John the Baptist, Aquarius, every year. And then there's a scripture in the Bible where King Herod says, hmm, I hear that John the Baptist has been resurrected because six months later, he has to fear that this guy is going to kill him and send him down to hell. That's what it means. That's what it means. Um, the transfiguration of Jesus remember he was taken to the holy mount and he was transfigured and there was Moses and Elijah and, and, and uh, the apostle Peter goes oh I'll make a tent for you how's that God Jesus and he says no and the sun was transfigured and it said he became like the shining sun mm, interesting what day would that be now, when would you put the hottest, 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 hottest day of the year? In the Northern Hemisphere or the South? Well, I'd take a guess. When would the transfigures... In the, the Nor in the Northern Hemisphere. This is all Northern Hemisphere technology. Because, rem because remember, the reason is because... When the sun passes that equinox, the cycle begins. It doesn't matter where you are on the Earth. 15 hours. The 21st... 
Beautiful, close. But remember, that's the nativity. We can't put it there. Okay. Let's try. What? What would? Well, here's. I'll give. You, I'll tell you, and then I'll explain. It's the sixth of August. Right in the middle, because let me show you how astrology works. Astrology works. Cancer begins on the twenty-first of June. Therefore, August would begin somewhere around here. The first days of August, from one to ten, are pure. They are right here. They are not contaminated by the neighbouring signs, right? Those, those first days of, of August, June, no, hang on, June, July, uh, August, the first days of August are, sorry, they're about here, sorry, in the middle. Because these, these are the, um, these days of, of August from the, um, sorry, from July the 21st to August the 1st is here. Right? That's got contamination of cancer. It's on the cusp. All people who have single digit numbers in their star sign from 1 to 10 are pure. They have no neighbouring contamination. So the sixth would be the sixth of virtually the sixth month. It's the, it's the middle, the transfiguration. It is not coincidental. 25th of March, what's that? Does anyone know? That's when Gabriel says to Mary, you will conceive a son. It's in the calendar. It's right there in the calendar. And don't they, if, if you're thinking, you go, hang on a minute. So if he's conceived here, Gabriel says, Mary, you will conceive a son. And the birthday of the son is here. There must be nine months from there to there. And there is. But have a look at this. <clears throat> the conception that happens there always on the 25th of March, it's a very, very holy day. corresponds with the womb. All of this corresponds with the womb. These are the, the six months of gestation of the, of the child. Here at Pentecost, 50 days after this, is embryo becomes fetus. Conception, embryo becomes fetus. Here we have the, the three Jewish festivals. I'm going to show you where they are. All right, The three pilgrimage festivals. Here, here and here. Ooh, I wonder why. Equinox, equinox, and this 50 days here of Pentecost, is 50, it takes 49 days for the, the embryo to become a fetus. Here in the virgin, which is the belly, is when the baby drops. The baby drops, the fall, fall, winter, spring, summer, that's the fall, autumn. The baby drops to be born. That is the cycle of the male and the fem feminine cycle. There it is. And those three pilgrimage festival of the, of the Jews are there. Guess what they call this day? Judgment Day. This is Rosh Hashanah. Uh, Rosh Hashanah? The Jewish festival? See you guys. Thank you, yes. Um, they call this, here is Judgment Day. This is the festival of booths, the festival of tabernacles. It's also called Rosh Hashanah, which means the head of the year, because this is, this is the first day of the Jewish sacred, secular year. This is the first day of the Jewish sacred year. Their sacred year begins here on March the 21st. Their secular year begins here. So they call this Rosh Hashanah, meaning the head, because this is the head of the new year. And they call it Judgment Day because this is the judgment of the grapes. Because when the, ju the, the, the grapes are squashed, you know, in the Bible it says, I will squeeze them in the wine press of my anger. That's the sun and its fury saying that I will squeeze those grapes and I will give mankind my blood. Okay. <clears throat> now, why did I say that these three wheels will teach you about astrology? Because... As we remembered before, the son is a child here, young boy, a man mature, a man with a walking stick and a dead man where the grim reaper is, where Saturn is. So if you look at the sun at six o'clock in the morning and you look at the energy that comes from the sun, it's young, it's youthful, the sun is coming up 
on the horizon. It's so strong and vibrant. It's in Aries for two hours and it gives us an electric polarity. All the flowers go boom, straight up. The sunflower stands like this and goes and faces the sun. The animals, chir the birds are chirping. Then all of a sudden they go quiet for two hours in Taurus. But in spring also, the blossom, this is the blossom, this is the whole month of March and Aprile, remember, open. This is the Sakura season, this is, and, and May Day is here too, remember May Day, we just talked about that. And I'll show you some more dates that are very, very, very scary and how the Illuminati uh, actually respect, oh, by the way, uh, that um, the Illuminati was founded on May the 1st. <laughs> Remember I told you about Osama bin Laden, Hitler, the royal wedding, the beatification of the Pope and all these things that conspire to happen. It's not by coincidence, guys, and I'm going to show you that. April the 19th over here, April the 19th over here, that's called the day, that day is called the, um, the day of sacrifice by fire. Let me tell you some things that happened on April the 19th, April the 20th in history. You'll remember these. They only happened in the last decade. 1993, Waco. 99 people died. April the 19th. Because you're in Aries. You do your killing here. <laughs> yes, and the last, it's the last day of Aries. April 19th, 1995. Oklahoma City bombing. 187 people dead. Exact same day, two years later. April 20th, 1999, Columbine Massacre, 13 people dead. April 20th, 2010, BHP Horizon explosion spill in the Caribbean, 11 people dead. This is the day when you do your killing. March the 20th, the eve, is when you start your wars because you're going to Aries. That's when in 2003, when um, George Bush began the Gulf War and he finished it exactly six weeks later on May Day. And they, they, they famously call it the Six Week War. And all the stupid people that go, oh, the Six Week War where we brought democracy to these bastard lands. They're calling it the Six Weeks War because they worship. They worship the magnetic dark energy of Saturn. They are Satanists. Saturn is Satan. They don't follow some spirit creature who's gone rotten. They follow this religion that uses magnetic power instead of electric power, and they use the darkness of it. Libya. We went into Libya this year. What was the day? 20th of March. Over here in Scorpio, when the sun goes through the equator, this is when the stock market crashes happen. 19th of October... Nine, because, because it's Scorpio. <laughs> so you've got to understand the way they think, guys. This is the bull market. The bull market. Right? And this is the bear market. That's the big, that's the bear. That, so that's why the bear market happens here. It's opposite the bull. Now, please watch this. On October the 19th, 1929... Black Friday, no, 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 sorry, let me correct this, uh, uh, that was March, it was October the 24th, okay, I've got two dates, but it doesn't matter because two of them happened here, the three greatest stock market crashes in history happened, two on this date, one on that date, why? 19th is the last day of Libra and the sun hands over to Scorpio to bite the sun, that's when you crash markets, 1929, October, Thursday the 24th. That was Black Thursday or Black Friday in Europe. Black Monday, Monday, 19th of October, 1987, when stock markets all around the world crashed. 2008, 20 years to the day, on October the 19th, stock markets crashed. If you want to kill someone, on the 22nd of November, i.e. JFK, you do it on the 22nd of November. That's when, remember I told you that the sun is passing, there's the Milky Way, goes through Taurus and Gemini, Scorpio and Sagittarius, that's when they killed JFK 
on a very, very powerful astrological day.